I'd like to introduce our final speaker today, um, who's Samson Chian. Samson is one of our three winners of the inaugural Kick Undergraduate Student Paper Challenge, which was conducted earlier this spring. So we welcome Samson, Samson and we're very excited to share his research as an emerging scholar. So Samson, please go ahead and um, take it away. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so today I'll be doing a presentation, um, which is also slightly different from the um, previous ones um, about generating uh, explanations um, for machine learning predictions uh, on uh, viral and bacterial pneumonia. And so the overarching goal um, of this research is to take various uh, chest x-rays of patients um, who have uh, bacteria um, and viral pneumonia as well as healthy patients and uh, build a, a machine learning model to classify um, between these uh, patients using these images. Um, and so is it possible to build a machine learning model that can accurately identify um, these different classes, um, but also uh, interpret this machine learning model in order to understand where the model is looking at when it's generating its predictions. Um, and so this introduces the idea of using explainability algorithms, also known as explainable AI, to analyze um, a model and the data it's predicting on in order to understand exactly where the model is looking at. And the ultimate goal is to see if this type of framework uh, can help radiologists in their work um, in diagnosing uh, different patients. So a quick uh, overview of explainable AI. Um, there are various types of explainable AI algorithms, um, like more like a family branch um, of different types of methods. Um, for this research particularly, we'll be focusing on post hoc algorithms, meaning uh, algorithms that analyze um, much complicated models after they're trained on the data instead of during the process or before. Um, and the benefit of this is you're able to use more complex models, um, such as deeper convolutional um, neural networks in order to learn uh, the features in the x-rays. Um, and there's a trade-off between interpretability uh, and accuracy sometimes. And so deeper and more complex models are harder to interpret. Um, than uh, simpler ones. So these algorithms uh, provide a way to understand these more complex models. So the first um, type of algorithm is known as LRP, uh, layer-wise relevance propagation. Um, and this is a method that I'll be talking more about um, a bit later, uh, but this essentially looks into the model's layers and weights and understands um, what uh, pixels in the image contribute most to activating um, a model's internal structure. Um, the second one is something known as LIME, um, and this method is uh, model agnostic, meaning it doesn't depend on what type of model you use. Um, and this method uh, differs from LRP in that it starts from the data first rather than the model, and it looks at individual subsections of the data to find um, what regions in the image contribute most to a model's prediction. Uh, and then the next one is called GradCam, um, which is similar to LRP, sort of, but instead of looking at each layers and each weights, um, it takes a look um, at the convolution layers uh, in the model, and then it takes um, the gradients um, that when you fit an image, uh, the gradients of the last convolution layer, and then it produces sort of like an activation map um, of the gradients. And the last uh, type of algorithm is sort of uh, more of a novel algorithm known as contrasted LRP, which is um, a modification of the regular LRP, um, but it takes the relevances and then it uh, differs between uh, different classes, such as viral and bacterial pneumonia. So you can um, visualize the difference between the classes more. So building um, a convolutional neural network to identify the features uh, in these type of patients um, requires uh, a complex um, model structure, uh, such as VGD16 and ResNet50, which are two state-of-the-art models uh, that do a very good job in um, image classification. Um, and as you can see from the uh, model structures, uh, it's a very deep um, convol uh, convolutional neural network. Um, which uh, picks, is able to pick up on many features uh, in the images. And so these two models uh, give some of the best results um, in classifying between the uh, uh, three different classes of patients. 
Uh, and so the X-ray images um, were all collected um, from Mendeley data and a bunch of image pre-processing is required um, on the images uh, to fit it into the model. Um, so making sure that uh, there's an, a similar amount um, of image examples from all different types of classes, and then doing some pre-processing um, on the images uh, to fit it into the model. Uh, and here's like an a, a image of um, just an overview of the model performance during training. So on the left, you have uh, the accuracy plot um, for tra the training set and validation set um, of images. Um, and uh, as you train the model more and more, each iteration, each epoch, uh, the accuracy grows more. And then the loss, which is what we're trying to minimize um, on the right side, is um, steadily decreasing. Um, so this simple, uh, this shows that our model is picking up on the features uh, in the um, data, that, the images that we're feeding it, and it's doing a good job in classifying between um, the chest x-rays. So uh, here's just more analysis um, on the model built, and it's very it's very important to have um, an accurate model in order to um, identify or examine what the model is looking at um, at each image. So um, you can see a confusion matrix on the left, which shows what the model is confusing. And in general, it's doing a very good job between the three classes, um, the, besides um, distinguishing between viral and bacterial pneumonia, which is doing, um, it's getting confused on a few examples. Um, and so it's important to run these explainability algorithms to understand what the model is looking at. So here's a brief overview um, of LRP, layer-wise relevance propagation again. And um, essentially what this does is you have your uh, neural network with uh, each layer, a uh, hidden layer inside, and it propagates your um, image uh, from the output layer uh, backwards. So instead of uh, forward propagating, it uh, propagates um, the image backwards, and then you compute relevance scores uh, at each neuron, um, which is these circles right here. And these relevant scores um, uh, represent how important each pixel in the image is um, to uh, a prediction that the model makes. Um, and so here you can take a look um, on the right is an example um, of LRP. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it produces sort of like a, a heat map um, based on the individual pixels uh, in the image. And um, that shows how important each pixel in the image is uh, com uh, contributing to the model's prediction um, of the class. And then on the left, you can see um, comparison of Lyme, which is more of a region-based method um, that takes regions uh, in the image and then finds which regions are most important to making a model prediction. Um, and then here's more examples um, of Lyme for the three different classes. Um, what Lyme does, it doesn't specifically go into each layer of the model to examine the weights. But instead, it takes subregions um, chosen specifically on the image and runs on the model to determine which of those subregions uh, is most important um, to the model's uh, prediction and highlights um, those specific regions. Uh, and then uh, another type of algorithm that I discussed was called GradCam. Um, and GradCam essentially is uh, an algorithm sort of like LRP, um, but instead it examines the gradients um, of the convolutional layers in your model. Um, and so this method also takes an image and then feeds it in to the model and then uh, produces an activation map, um, which is a heat map that uh, represents all the gradients um, in the convolutional layer. And that picks up where exactly the model is looking at. Um, so here are some examples um, of GradCam instead. It's uh, sort of like a combination between LRP and Lyme kind of. It produces a heat map um, of a specific region um, on the image. And you can see what the model is focusing on and um, what region it's not focusing on. And the last variation, um, uh, which is known as contrastive LRP, is a slight modification to the original LRP method, um, but instead um, it takes the relevant scores and applies a modification that distinguishes um, uh, the relevance between various types of classes. Um, and so you can identify uh, or distinguish between um, viral and bacterial pneumonia a lot more clear um, using these uh, different types of uh, relevant scores. Um, 
And so it's very important overall to look and compare um, these various types of explainability methods uh, in order to understand what your model is specifically looking at. Um, and so there are many types of uh, algorithms that you can use. Um, but in order to get a thorough understanding of what your model has learned, um, what your model is looking at when it's making predictions, it's important to uh, compare these types of methods um, and uh, while you're building an accurate model to help patients. Um, and just some ongoing research right now, um, explain, ex, explainable AI is a continuously growing field. More algorithms are being developed um, every day and uh, more data um, is being collected to build more accurate models. Um, and uh, different types of data, such as CT scans, can also help um, with uh, radiologists' work in diagnosing patients. Um, so running these algorithms on different types of models um, be able to examine which model has learned um, uh, the data more accurately than others. And yeah, thank you so much for listening to my presentation. And I would like to um, acknowledge uh, Dr. Michael Bazzani, who's also on the call right now, um, for all of his help um, in conducting this research, collecting data, and implementing um, this, these algorithms to identify um, pneumonia. And uh, thank you. This is my email if you want to contact me. Thank you so much, Samson. It's um, really exciting to see your research evolve and we'll be you know, watching your, your career and your scientific research with interest. We really appreciate you sharing your work with us and um, congratulations again on, on winning our um, student paper challenge.